this video. Today I'm going over the 2024 gubernatorial elections map. There are currently 11 governors who are up either for election, not running for your election, we have an open race. And today I'm going to be going through some of the current polling data, if there is any, about these races and assigning how I think these races look right now using their current polling data. So just to show you what I mean, the first state I'm going to do is the state of Montana. Only one poll has been done. And the Republican Gene Forte is over the Democrat Bussy by 22 points. So what that means is based on the current poll, the Republican is going to win by 22 points off this poll. Which means, seeing as it's over 22 points, I will assign Montana in the safe Republican column. Safe meaning it's 15 points or more in favor of the Republican candidate winning. The margin of victory is over 15 points. So that was the state of Montana. Next up, the state of North Dakota does not have any polling data yet between the Republican, I believe it's Armstrong versus Piepcorn, the Democrat. There is not any polling data, but what I'm doing is based on the past results, seeing as they're both about 40 points or more for the Republican, I feel pretty safe about putting North Dakota in the Republican column. So that's Montana and North Dakota, both in the safe Republican column. Third, we go to Utah. Utah, again, no polling data as of now, as of I'm recording this video, but both of these races are 30 points or more uh, for the Republican Governor Cox up against the Democrat King. No polls yet, but both 30 points. That is enough to put Utah in the safe Republican column. I'm sure I'll revisit this video maybe a month before Election Day, and there hopefully should be some polls by then. But for now, this is what we have. In Missouri, the state of Missouri, we have Ashcroft, the Republican, going up against Quaid, the Democrat. In this one, the Republican Ashcroft is up by 17 points over the Democrat Quaid. That is above the 15% margin of safe, so Missouri is added to the safe Republican column as well. Again, this is not my personal opinion. This is based off of the polling data. And if there is no polling data, then I interpret it based off the prior results of the uh, previous election. So four out of the 11 have all been safe for the Republicans so far. Number five is the state of Indiana. This one is an interesting one because last time the Republican won Holcomb by 24.6 points. In the time before that, it was by six points. But given that he won by 24, you can do 24 plus six, that would be 30.6%. Divide that by two, get the average of that. That would just be enough to be over 15 points. So I feel pretty confident in this scenario putting Indiana in the safe Republican column. So that is the fifth state for the Republicans in the safe column. Now we come to the state of West Virginia. This is an interesting one because the Democrat Jim Justice won back in 2016. However, he did switch parties to become a Republican and he won last time as a Republican by 34 points. So you have to count that as a win for the Republicans and he's running for Senate now as a Republican. West Virginia is a little bit of a tricky situation where there's no polls yet. Morrissey, the Republican, Williams, the Democrat. But I feel very confident in putting West Virginia in the safe Republican column. Next, we have, after West Virginia, we have the state of Delaware. Delaware will be, there's the candidates are not yet announced yet. This is an open seat. The primary has not happened yet. It will be a new Democrat going up against a new Republican. The last two elections, the Democrat won by over about 19 and 20 points respectively. So I feel very comfortable putting Delaware in the safe Democratic column. The first of these seats going to the Democrats. So now the Democrats have one of the governorships of the gubernatorials and the Republicans have six. Next, we go to the state of Vermont, where Republican incumbent Governor Phil Scott is running for re-election against a Democrat who has not yet won the primary. Still waiting to find out who the Democratic candidate will be. Scott won last time by 41 points, 8.7 the time before that. I have no doubt in my mind with Scott on the ballot, this will be a safe Republican state. Very funny seeing Vermont being red, but very interesting nonetheless. Republican 7 and Democrats 1. Now we go to the three that I think will actually be competitive. The way Washington um, does, I believe, the governor's races is there's an open primary and the top two candidates, I believe, get nominated. I could be wrong about this, but feel free to let me know if you're from Washington and if I'm wrong. But there's an open primary first and then it goes on to the general election. Um, 
I am definitely wrong about that. No. Next, we go on to the state of Washington. Washington is an open primary for governor where it doesn't do Republican and Democratic primaries. Instead, it's just it goes to the election and which candidate is the leading candidate at the end of the day ends up winning. The Democrat Ferguson, this is an open race, by the way. The Democrat Ferguson is 22. The Republican, I believe it's Reichart, Reichert, has 20. And the, another Democrat has six. And another Republican has five. So I'm just going to add these up in all fairness. The two Democrats, that would get to about 28%. Republicans would get to about 25%. And in that, I believe this it still needs to be nominated, but at least one of these Democrats will win one seat and one of these Republicans will win one seat. That'll be about a three-point lead for the Democrats. So given that, Washington's a little tricky, but I'm pretty confident Washington is probably going to go in the lean Democratic column, at least at this moment right now. Next, we go to the state of New Hampshire, where Republican Governor Chris Sununu is retiring. The leading candidate right now on the Republican side is former Senator Kelly Ayotte. She is leading over the Democratic favorite, Mayor of Manchester, Joyce Craig, or former Mayor of Manchester, excuse me, Joyce Craig. Ayotte is up by nine points in one poll, three points in another poll. Add those up to 12, divide by two, that gets six. Six points, that would be enough to put the state of New Hampshire right now in the likely Republican column. Ayotte leads over Craig in the likely Republican column. And the last state to go over, the state of North Carolina, definitely be the one, the state that I'm watching the most. It is an open race. The incumbent Democratic governor is term limited. And look at this race, how close this is. The Democrat Stein is leading over the Republican Robinson by 0.2%, under 1%, a statistical dead heat, a statistical tie almost, a very, very close race. Definitely North Carolina is the close governor's race to watch for in this election cycle. That being said, Stein does have a very narrow lead in the tilt column. This gives North Carolina to the Republic or to the Democrats, excuse me, by the smallest of margins. 0.2%, under 1% of the vote. Definitely one to watch for. So that'll be it for today's video. I thought this would be a fun one to do. It's I'm going to be doing it for the Senate race after I did it for the presidential race. Hopefully there'll be more polls by the next time I do it. But still, I feel like the governor's elections don't get covered as much, especially in presidential years, as uh, some of the other races such as president and senate. So I thought it'd be interesting to do. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to give this video a like and click subscribe. Uh, so you never miss a video I make like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.